Find out what's going on. Get involved. Change things from the inside. Make a difference. Take pride. Multicultural at its best. The Louisa Marshall Show, coming up. Today, all new. Part one of the two-part series, Wanted Dave Dixon. He used to patrol the city's most troubled neighborhood for 25 years. He's fearless. Well, I think a lot of people have to write you know, the government, the people in power, and ask you know, where these kids are being placed. I mean, there has to be a better alternative, uh, you know, safer housing. Yeah. He helped a lot of troubled teens, but also arrested some of them. And this responds to the four-pillar approach to solve the increasing drug use in East Vancouver. It's not a complaint, but I, you know, my wish when that opened was that it was attached to a program, you know, like a hospital or a treatment program where the, you know, the, the end goal was to get the person off of drugs, but it's not, and that's my, I guess, my complaint. Two years ago, former Vancouver Police Dave Dixon was supposed to retire, but Dave and the tough downtown Eastside are totally inseparable. Dave has deep compassion to continue to work on the streets of East Hastings, but this time, at the local community center as a community outreach worker. Find out more what a mentor and role model Dave has become and what the community says about him. Dave is probably the father that a lot of people didn't have. But he was always for me personally, very respectful, no matter what the situation was that brought us together. And he was someone that he, I and other women I know actively sought out to help us and to be um, someone who stood up for us and who um, valued us in a way that not a lot of other people showed us down there. Here's my one-on-one -on -one interview with the most loved and valuable member of our community, former Vancouver cop, Dave Dixon. Please watch. Wow, it's nice to see you. It's nice to see you guys. <laughs> Dave, Dave, thanks, Dave, thanks Dave, Dave, Dave. Thanks for inviting Dave. me. Oh, uh, I, we've been seeing you around Vancouver for quite some time now. Um, and I know you retired. But you're still busy working. You retired from uh, the force two years ago. That's Did right. That? Yes. Am I right? Yeah, two and a half years. And you were in the force for 28 years. And now you are working as a community outreach worker. I am. So how's that experience for you? I, I'm you know, I enjoy it. It's, it's really not that different from what I did before. You know, because a lot of people ask me, well, how, you know, you know, is your job different? And it's really not. I'm still doing exactly the same thing. And I still do some police-related activities, you know, because, I mean, the, the clients that I work with, a lot of them were kids when they started out, even in daycare. And now they're 35, 36 years old, you know, so they still trust me enough to come to me. And, and even some of the managers of the hotels down there that I've been going into for the past 30 years call me if they have problems, because if they call the police sometimes, they don't get a great response. You know, some people tell them that it's not really a police issue. So I still get calls to deal with, you know, problem tenants. And, I, you know, I don't mind doing it. Job really isn't that different. Mm -hmm. I don't have a job description really. I, you know, my, the people I've been working with, you know, you know, my clients are calling whatever you want. But I mean, uh, you know, I, I've cared about them for a long time, so I really have a problem saying no. And a lot of times, it's a very simple matter of, of you know, if one of the young ladies is being bothered by somebody in the building, I knock on his door and tell him to stop it. And I can usually be really convincing. You're going to be more convincing. Is it because they know you better mm -hmm. than? Uh... Most times, they they know me. You know, and they know what I've done in the past. Because you, you work in the streets of yeah. uh, so I, you know, so I can Vancouver. Be, I can be pretty, you know, I can put, you know, a fairly convincing argument, you know, as to, you know, stop bothering somebody. So you're effective. I am. That's great. I'm willing to step out of the box sometimes and go that extra step. Are you enjoying your job right now? I enjoy it very much. That's why I'm still down there. When I left the police, I put the word out I didn't want to leave because I'm still really hooked in with the, the community centers in the area, which I work at two nights a week. You know, I'm hooked in with the, the helping the women and the kids still, so I didn't want to leave. So I, 
you know, I let that be known and I got a phone call from an organization down there, Lookout Society. They've been around for 40 years and they're an awesome group and they offered me a job as an outreach counselor. You know, so I help people get into housing, I, I take them to medical appointments, uh, you know, and just really do whatever they need. You know, I don't think there's much that we don't help them with. You know, and I love, uh, you know, there's probably not a week goes by where somebody doesn't tell me how much they appreciate me being out there, because when I say being out there, I'm usually out there before 5 o'clock every morning. I wake up early, so I'm down there around 4.30, quarter to 5. I walk Hastings Street, you know, I've got a bag usually, I sometimes have cigarettes, I've got cookies, you know, and other uh, different items that I hand out. You know, so they, you know, they know me, you know, when they see me first thing in the morning and, and it gives me a chance to talk to them. If they need housing sometimes, I can get them into one of our shelters. You know, so, you know, I still, you know, enjoy it. Dave Dixon was born and raised in British Columbia. He left school but later returned to continue his studies. In 1980, he joined the Vancouver Police Department and was stationed in Canada's poorest, crime-ridden, drug and HIV-infested downtown Eastside for 28 years. During his last two years in the force, he worked as sex trade liaison officer for the department and became an advocate for women who worked in the street of downtown Eastside. In 1998, he was also an early influence in the Missing Women's Task Force, which raised an alarm about the growing number of missing women in the downtown east side, which later led to an investigation of serial killer Picton and his Port Coquitlam pig farm. Because of his dedication and outstanding contributions, he earned a lot of awards and recognition. City of Vancouver Youth Award, Federal Justice Department Award for Community Policing, International Women's Safety Award, British Columbia Community Achievement Award, to name a few. But for Dave, the best award is the kids he helped to fight crime and addiction to better themselves while helping others to do the same. In February 2005, then Constable Dixon was not recontracted to work for the Vancouver Police Department. The downtown Eastside and other communities rally together to keep Dave Dixon in the neighborhood because he is the trusted link to the police department. The department had no choice but to have Dave Dixon, often referred to as Policeman Dave, to continue his excellent and outstanding work with the troubled youth and women on the streets of East Vancouver. Dave retired from the force two years ago, but still continues his never-ending commitment to help kids, teens, women at a local community center as a community outreach worker. I think a lot of people down here did. A lot of people down here know Dave. He's nice. He's really like, um, off, he's real. He offers you support and tells you like straight facts. Like you shouldn't be down here doing like bad stuff that I was doing when I lived down here. <laughs> I've, this program I've been part of uh, three years now. I just recently came to Ray Camp because my son's in the daycare, in the upstairs daycare. Um, I recently met Dave three years ago when I first came around. Didn't really know who he was. Just kind of was like, all right, who's this guy? And then we slowly got to know each other, and he's super. He's awesome. So what can you say to Dave right now? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support, and you're not, you're not judgmental. And we all appreciate that. Too many people can boast. I mean, they enjoy their job that much. So that's a, a huge thing for me. Yeah. I know uh, you can write a book with all the exciting things that happened to you. If you have to pick one, what is your most unforgettable time being a cop? I don't, like, I don't, I'm not sure there's, there's many exciting points that I remember that much. I think it's the work with the kids, the kids that I do that I remember more. And I mean, it's, it's probably sad, but I, those stick in my mind a lot more. I remember one 
one lady, I, I go to a, the, one of the churches down there has a drop-in for the women where they go for, you know, I think the Wish organization puts a dinner on for the, for the girls on the street that work the street every night. So they can go in there and they can have a shower, they can get a meal, and they can just sort of crash for a few hours and be safe. You know, and I used to go in there, you know, quite often, so the girls were comfortable with me. But there was one lady, I want to say lady, I think she was about 40 years old. She came up to me one day, and she trusted me enough by seeing me around. And she came over, and she says, I've seen you around here. And she says, you know, and I'd like to introduce myself, and she did. And then she said to me, she said, would you mind very much if I gave you a hug? And I said, of course not, because I said, That's, I was raised in that kind of family. And I think she seen me hugging some of the other girls that I'd known for years. You know, but I hugged her, and then she started crying, and I, and I felt bad. I, I said, are you okay? And... And she says, you know what, she says, you know, I just want to thank you because she says that's the first time I've ever been able to hug a man, you know, that didn't try and get into my pants. And she said, that means a lot to me. And I almost started crying, you know. And so stuff like that really sticks in my mind. I mean, that was a huge thing. And there's other things, similar things with, you know, some of the kids. You know, I used to go into the daycares when I had some downtime. I'd, I'd just park the police car, car and I'd walk into the community centers and, and visit the kids in the daycare and play with them. They love the uniform. But <coughs> one particular... You know, time I walked in, there was a, a little First Nations girl that seen me coming in my uniform, and they were in the gymnasium playing, and she literally, you know, slid herself on her butt right to the far side of the wall when she seen me coming and approaching the kids. And one of the counselors that worked there told me who she was and told me why, and the kid had seen a lot of violence, and, and every time she seen the police, they were either arresting mum or dad and taking them away. So that was her sort of perception of the police. So she, she seen me coming and figured that was going to happen. But I started playing with the other kids, and I kept watching her out of the corner of my eye. And they brought some balls out, and we were throwing the balls back and forth. And I took one, and I rolled it right across the gymnasium floor. And she started watching it, and I was still watching her out of the corner of my eye. And she finally walked over and picked it up. And I said, can you throw it back? And she did. And for the next five minutes, I spent you know, five minutes throwing the ball back and forth and getting her a little bit closer each time. And within five minutes, I had her back in the group. You know, and that was the end of you know, her fear of the uniform. The very next time I came in there, she was one of the first kids to run up and be picked up like the other kids all did. So stuff like that, I mean, the breaking down of that barrier... You know, and letting, you know, the kids know, especially that the uniform, you know, you don't have to be afraid of it. Because most other kids that get raised wouldn't be afraid of a uniform. But if, if they're raised in that area, you know, in the downtown east side, that's the only time they see the police when they're coming in to arrest somebody. And that's really sad. You know, so little things like that that I managed to break down with that child and a whole bunch of other people. Those are the things that stick in my mind. And I that's why I'm still yeah, down there. I can just imagine how tra traumatic it will be for some, you know, young kids to experience or to even feel that way towards uh, you know somebody in uniform oh yeah no it's awful I mean because we don't we sort of take that for granted you know but the kids down there I mean they're just raised in a different environment the kids that go to school in the downtown east side they're literally the sandboxes in the schools down there have to be swept by the maintenance men before school opens for hypodermic needles you know and that just doesn't happen you know in other sections of the city so the kids are used to sp stepping over condoms and needles on the way to school and seeing sex trade workers on the corners you know, and I don't think any you know kids should have to sort of live in that environment. But you know, it's it's sad. Wow. Well, Dave, if you have to go back and uh, do things differently, what would be the one thing that you want to change? Probably the missing women. I guess I don't think in my career. I don't think I'd do anything differently. I I got hooked into the community very early in in the first couple of years of you know joining in 1980. And I think seeing the poverty and the conditions that most of the people lived in, I think that's where I formed, you know, I, I guess my attachment to the people, you know, and wanted to do something to make a difference. And arresting people really doesn't do a lot. I mean, I was arresting the same people two or three times in one <laughs> week. You know, they go to jail, get out, and, and I'm arresting them again. So <laughs> I, I sort of tried to take an extra step, and I, I got to know the people in my community down there. And there was never any thought about how long I was going to be there. I, did, I didn't care. I, you know, I got out of the car, and I knocked on every door, you know, for about a 12-block strip of Hastings Street and introduced myself. Gave them my pager number, told them who I was. I said, if you have any problems, you know, let me know and I'll, and I'll see if I can help you with them. And, and that's how I sort of got hooked into the community. And I loved every minute of it. I mean, I think I got more out of the community than, you know, they ever got out of me. I mean, going to a daycare, if you ever have a bad day, you walk into a daycare and get mobbed by 20 kids. You know, I tell oh. you, it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty tough to stay, you know, in a bad mood. <laughs> you know, so... You're a hero, Dave. Well... <laughs> to their eyes. Well, I, I, hope I so. think I hope they I, need somebody like you. No, I hope I made a difference. And I think some of the kids, you know, they told me that, you know, sometimes when they're out with their buddies, somebody suggested doing something stupid. And, and one of them would say, no, no, if, if Dave finds out, you know, you know he's going to kick our ass. You know, oh. So I, I think I did make a difference in some of the kids. 
And I still see some of those kids. You know, I think the mark of a good community center is when you've got 40-year-old kids coming back to the same community center where they were raised, you know, in 